Hi everybody, I'm Bill Brennan, welcoming you to another edition of Honolulu on the Move, the show that brings you the latest news and information about the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. HART is working closely with state and city leaders and other stakeholders to minimize the impact the rail project has on local businesses. Late last month, HART Executive Director and CEO Dan Grabowskis announced a resolution to what could have been a big problem for several businesses along a stretch of Farrington Highway in Waipahu. Uh, we um, went about our business trying to build the project and unfortunately that requires us because we're in the middle of these roadways to have certain restrictions and closures. Um, but the elected officials really prevailed upon us at heart and at HDOT to see if there wasn't something that could be done because of the unique circumstances uh, here out in front of Taniokas. And I'm here to say that we have found a way uh, to open the left-hand turn here into Taniokas. Um, and I can explain to you why we were able to do that and also that we're going to be studying this to make sure that um, first and foremost that the decision that we're making today um, can be made permanent because we can study it over the coming weeks, months and years and make sure that it is in fact safe. So why were we able to uh, make the change? Um, well, we asked Kiwit, um, the contractor, uh, to uh, take a look at some of the uh, particulars around this intersection. and. First and foremost, because the columns in this particular area um, near the Waipahu drainage canal are spaced further apart, that gave us a different line of sight and they were able to uh, take a look at measuring that and determine that a left-hand turn in fact would be both a safe and sensible solution. Also the wider median and the sight distance requirements that are required uh, we believe also can be met. Um, there's also limited uh, movement of uh, traffic uh, and pedestrians in the area, so there's not a lot of other adverse um, type of activity. And the safety record at this intersection has been a good one. There has not been an accident here for eight years. Um, and then finally, our ability to create an additional space uh, for the left-hand turn pocket. So today, uh, that left-hand turn pocket accommodates maybe two automobiles. With the fix that we're going to put in place, we'll be able to put as many as five uh, vehicles for that left-hand turn. So we think that also is going to enhance safety. So as a result of these engineering changes, um, as I say, we can now um, announce very happily that we will have a left turn uh, into the plaza here and that um, we'll be assessing and monitoring uh, the, the, uh, this left-hand turn over the, again, months and years in the future to make sure that when we turn this roadway back over to HDOT, we can give them a full report on what we believe is going to be, again, a safe uh, solution. Um, but the proof will be, uh, folks, please uh, you know, move through this intersection uh, cautiously and uh, with safety, and we'll be able to make sure that it stays open. The State Department of Transportation worked with HART to come up with the resolution. Um, I just want to congratulate Hart and Kiwit on this initiative. Um, this was something that was brought up from the community as a concern. This was a big change from what they were, how they were going to progress in the construction in this area. And I want to thank the, the area legislators, um, representatives, and the council members, and, and senator, for bringing this issue up to Hart and to DOT uh, to ensure that we address it. Um, one of the big things I want to point out for Hart. <clears throat> Really appreciate the, the relationship and the partnership that we have with them. Uh, they have a project that's been going on for a while that they're trying to meet deadlines on, trying to meet the uh, budgets on. This is a huge departure from what they had. But understanding that this is a huge improvement and improvement for the community, they put the effort in and, and the fund and the time in to ensure that they came up with a solution that was safe and generally um, usable for everybody. Uh, the great thing for DOT is uh, we have an agreement that. Hart takes the management of this corridor at this time, and when it's turned over to us, we have the time from now till, till then to measure the intersection, to see how it operates, to see if there's any mitigations that need, need to be done before it comes back to DOT. So again, um, Hart and, and Kiwit's done a tremendous job in addressing this, and again, thank the area legislators for bringing it up. Thank you. Several state and city lawmakers were also involved in the discussions that led to keeping the left turn open. Okay, so this is a great day. This is a win-win opportunity for Taniokas, Mel, Justin, and Jasmine. Thank you for being here and bringing this to our attention. And I also want to acknowledge my colleagues, the representatives, Council Member Minor, as well as Senator Nishihara, and Senator Kidani for really working together, and Representative Cullen and Representative Aquino. This is something that you don't see too often, where you have area elected officials, as well as all stakeholders working together uh, to ensure that, one, this intersection, this area, this left pocket turn lane is safe, 
And two, uh, is that we also uh, support our businesses in this area, which is really, really important, especially for this corridor. So I want to thank Director Gabowskis, as well as the engineers and the HART team and QIT staff, and all people who made this come to a reality, a reality today. So thank you. You know, it, uh, I think all the others mentioned, uh, it was a really a, a total um, group effort on the part of Kiwit, a part of HART, the DOT, and certainly um, all the rest of the legislators, uh, both um, Aquino, uh, Colin, and of course, uh, Brendan, and, uh, and also uh, uh, Councilman Midor as well. And you know, as well as uh, Senator Kidani, it's it's an issue that when we were made aware of it, that uh, that it might have uh, turned out differently, where the left hand turn would have been eliminated. Uh, it was of great concern. So, I think uh, uh, on the part of uh, all of us making a sincere effort to make it happen, to see what they could do. I think on the part of Kiwit and Hart, uh, taking a look at how the spacing would be to make it actually happen and to make it safely. Uh, I think that was so important, and although uh, sometimes it seems like government doesn't work too well together, this is a case where the sandbox here is the Tanioka store and everything else on this side, and certainly as an institution, you know, uh, Tanioka uh, has provided so much good service and good food to the community as well as uh, <coughs> certainly some of us who have had fundraisers. But, the thing is, without that kind of help, and certainly the food's over here as well, but without that kind of help and that kind of uh, really uh, perseverance on the part of uh, the Tanioka family, both Jasmine and uh, Justin, you know, staying with it along with uh, their, their father, uh, Mel, I, I think that really kind of kept it in the forefront and kept it going. And I think it's good to see that today, really, it is a set of positive news and sometimes might be not so good news for a day. We're here today mainly because it's a culmination of uh, a lot of hard work and support. Uh, it's been mentioned already, but I uh, really wanted to give credit to the community. The community of Waipahu, the Waipahu Neighborhood Board, as well as the businesses and the residents that, that use this area. It's a big victory for them, uh, but this couldn't have been done without DOT, Hart, Kiwit, and my colleagues, so thank you very much. This is an issue that was brought up uh, um, back in March when Representative Aquino uh, and the other area legislators and the council members with Hart, with DOT, with Kiwit did a community meeting and we need to acknowledge the community here because one, for them being patient with all the traffic that's going on with all the different numerous construction projects and then for the area local businesses because small business in Hawaii is such a hard thing to not just do but then be successful at. So we got to make sure that they can continue to be successful um, and working with everyone here and then bringing it to light, bringing it to the neighborhood board and then getting all the partners to come together and for Hart and DOT to make an announcement like this and you know promise to the community that we will have a left turn lane is a great ordeal and uh, getting anybody to promise something is always good so making them do it here is, is a great thing so thank you. We want to thank all the legislatures for all of their help um, they were tremendous in helping us get the left hand turn back. I want to thank the community, the Waipahu community, the neighborhood board, um, everybody was so supportive. We especially I especially want to thank all of our customers who have come from all over the island to support us. There's so many people that come in and they say, hey, we're here to support you folks. And we're so grateful. We truly are so thankful. And thank you to our employees who have just been tremendous through all of this. We just want to thank everyone um, from the bottom of our heart. And we, we thank God for allowing us to be here. And um, our family just really wants to thank everybody. Every intersection is going to be unique, and everyone's going to have its own uh, challenges. Um, when we go along the line, there will be, I know, additional requests for us as we look at other left-hand turn restrictions or lane restrictions that will be both temporary and permanent. Um, and our pledge is to work uh, with our partners at HDOT and with the local officials along the route to make sure that um, we give every one of the intersections not just one or not just two looks, but as many looks as it takes to make sure that if there's a possibility to maintain the status quo, we'll try to do that. State Senator Michelle Kadani and City Council Member Ron Monor, who could not be at the press conference, were also instrumental in bringing about the resolution of the left turn on Farrington Highway. Now, Hart and city leaders, including Mayor Kirk Caldwell, are encouraging folks to shop and dine at area businesses and restaurants 
that are being impacted by rail construction. Most of those businesses and eateries are located along Farrington Highway in Waipahu and along Kamehameha Highway in Pearl City, Waimalu, and Aiea. Working with those businesses, Hart has come up with a program that we call Shop and Dine on the Line. So first of all, we'll talk a little bit about what the program is. So it's Shop and Dine on the Line. Now, what you're going to see in the coming weeks and months is signs like this popping up in Pearl City, Pearl Ridge, um, Waipahu, and Aiea in businesses. Today we've got an uh, announcement of about 65 businesses uh, that we've officially signed up with Shop Dine on the Line. And we've uh, actually got a waiting list that we've started now with another two dozen businesses. The goal is just to remind the community that while there may be traffic that's uh, taking place um, that we're you know, causing by virtually rail construction, it doesn't mean that these wonderful restaurants and businesses aren't here in business. So all you really need to do is you can go online to um, the Hart uh, website at honolulutransit.org or you can go to a new website which we just created, which is shopanddineonthelining.com. And if you do that, um, you'll be able to download uh, a card, Shop and Dine on the Line card, and with this card, you'll be able to go into any of the 65 and growing businesses and get special discounts. So you'll see that you know, there may be two for one discounts or 10 or 20 percent off um, for certain purchases. The idea is that these businesses are also trying to meet the public halfway. If you'll take the extra effort to come down here and shop, they're going to give you a little bit of an extra bonus for doing that. Whether it be, you know, again, a drink, a free drink with your meal, um, or 10 percent off on some purchase uh, or some other item. And it's really important for us as a community to, to think about doing that. So, shop and dine on the line. Again, um, take a look for the posters. You'll have your card. Um, we'll also have a, an app that you can have uh, on, on your uh, phone so that if you don't have the card, you can show that. But all you need to do really is to come into the businesses, mention you're part of the Shop and Dine on the Line program, and you'll get those discounts. Um, there is on, online, we do have a um, uh, you'll be able to download the brochure. It'll tell you all the participating businesses and what the discount that they're offering is. Again, you can get that in hard copy at any of the participating businesses, or you can get that online at shopanddine.com. So, shopanddineonthelion.com. So that's really the, the basis for the program. It's been very successful in other cities like uh, Seattle and Phoenix and Los Angeles. Um, is it the panacea to cure all the problems with traffic and the impacts and the difficulty to get here? No. But we think it's a really important element of getting folks to focus on the importance of coming together as a community at a little bit of a tough time for some of these businesses, and giving them a little bit of an extra, a little extra love by the, by, uh, by coming here to shop. Um, maybe you can come by on the weekend, come by uh, during, the, during the evenings. Um, but really, really, that's really the message that we're trying to impart. So, without further ado, let me um, talk about. Have some, invite some of the businesses who are actually participating to talk to you about um, what we're doing to work with them. Uh, the first person I'm going to ask is uh, Linda Matsuo uh, from Shiro's. And Linda, come on and say a couple words. Oh, welcome to Shiro's, everyone. Um, first off, I'd like to say hats off to Hart because they have been really supportive. Um, I feel like they're on a mission to help the small businesses. So any small businesses who are struggling, just call Jeannie and she'll definitely help you. <laughs> What's your cell number? What's your cell number? <laughs> yeah. But uh, my main message is to plead, beg, anything, grovel for public support for all of the businesses along Kamehameha Highway on the rail route. We are all suffering. We're all in this together. Um, we need the public to come and help us out. We survived the Great Depression and you know whatever else, but I don't know how long we can survive rail construction. And a lot of people are already um, struggling with paying rent. And so um, please, Kokua, come. Camp Highway is not that bad. It's not congested all the time. Uh, we're all open for business. business. Um, we will greet you, we'll do anything, we'll, you know, whatever it takes. Please come for the next two years. <laughs> two years. Okay, thank you very you much. Another iconic Oahu restaurant, Highway Inn, is also participating in the Shop and Dine on the Line program.
And we, we have decided to participate with Hart's program. Um, I think Jim brought up a, a good question earlier about uh, the discounting program for small businesses already suffering um, to, to ask uh, for the small businesses to provide additional discounts. Sometimes that that's becomes an even more difficult situation for us. Um, I went in, um, took a look at the program. We thought we want to commend Hart for, for making an effort simply because I know the city as well as the state has evaluated a couple options in regards to subsidies to tax breaks. And for us, we wanted to approach it in a different manner in which we would like to um, encourage the people already working on the heart uh, on the rail, the construction of the rail. Um, all of them do need to eat. They need to have, uh, eat lunch um, or dinner. Um, perhaps some of those businesses uh, will have catering events when they successfully complete certain phases of the project. Um, we already have in our business a frequent diner program with people, if they do sign up with us online, they get a five point or basically five dollar discount. Um, and so what we did in tandem with the HEART program is we decided to give an additional uh, five points or ten points if there is any HEART, um, as well as we have community members that participate in this program, to give them an additional incentive to, to participate in our um, diner program as well as to collaborate with the efforts of HEART. Of course, it's not only restaurants that are participating. Dozens of other businesses, including a gym, are also taking part. Um, I, I want to commend uh, Dan, Jeannie, and their staff. You know, they've been really good as far as informing us of any updates. And we were about to know about a particular situation that the decision had been made to cut off one of our main entrances into the shopping center. And that shopping center is mostly locally owned and operated business, as are we. And we have a tremendous amount of competition. And the traffic had already affected our business already. And had they eliminated it permanently, it would have been catastrophic. You know, that, that place would have been a ghost town. And I want to thank uh, Councilman um, Elefante, who really helped us. You know, we started a dialogue. And Hart came up with some great conclusions that would help us, as well as allow them to still do or, or meet their timetables. So I'm really happy. And when Jeannie actually contacted us about doing this uh, program, I, you know, I, I jumped at the opportunity because it's an additional serendipity. Hard showing local businesses that they actually want to help us. I mean, you know, they, it, this thing's happening, so we, we can't stop this. The best we can do is try and survive through this and maybe even get a little bit better or not lose as much market share. So I'm, I'm really pleased. What are you going to do as far as the offer that you have? Uh, we're going to offer no enrollment fee. Anybody, what, we're going to call it a heart special, no enrollment fee. How much is the fee usually? Uh, it, it generally is about $40 to $50 initially. So, and we're already the most economical in the state anyway. <laughs> The idea behind the Shop and Dine on the Line program is that local residents help each other out when times are tough. I just feel compelled to say, you know, um, when you see uh, the positive messages that Shiro has around this, um, the walls here, I mean, I think what we're trying to do is just to say, it's not, it's not, that's something that we can do just to say we can't try. We're going to try. We're going to try to do the best we can. And I think that with the cooperation from these businesses who are along with us, and the community coming forward, I think that's going to make a big difference. And that's a good segue for our next speaker. The mayor has made it very clear to us at heart that uh, local businesses along the corridor is a priority. As, as, as important as it is to get the project completed, we don't want to hurt people along the way. So I'm going to let the mayor say a couple words about the program and about um, the importance I know that he feels about the businesses. Thanks, Dan. Good morning, Aloha, <coughs> folks. It's uh, always a good day when we're in Shiro's. Um, and I've got an order from City Hall to bring back a whole bunch of Simon, which we're going to be placed and hopefully be ready for us when we leave today. And the message really is to please uh, come down here in this great part of town, Waipahu area, and do your shopping, do your dining during the construction period. Um, we heard from Linda, we heard from Monica, both of them legacies. I mean, it's pretty cool that you have women running businesses that were started by, few, by past generations with great stories. As I walked in here, I saw a picture of Linda's dad standing with Governor Burns and the stories that that tells about these businesses. And we want to make sure that the legacy continues. For me, I look at it as a first step by heart, a good first step to shop and dine. And I went on the website, and you can get an adobo omelet here at Shiro's for $1.95. I don't think you'd buy the eggs for $1.95, let alone have someone cook it for you mix up the adobo and everything else and have an ono breakfast. So that's just one example of many opportunities using this program to come and enjoy life on this part of the island. But it is a first step 
of what is going to have to be a very vigorous program by heart to make sure that during the construction period, the businesses that are impacted are helped as much as possible. Whether it's more signage, whether it's, it's more a hotline, whether it's having police officers are out there directing, but these are all the other things we need to look at. And I've asked HART to do exactly that. The city will work with them to provide what resources we can to make sure as the project moves through, and it's going to be moving down, right? It, it leaves the area and it gets better. Um, but during that most impacted time, we got to make sure we do as much as we can to make sure that when we're piled with the project, Shiro's, Highway Inn, all these other businesses are here to thrive <coughs> with rail. And I believe they will. We'll have much more traffic, a lot more people traveling, which they can get off at any one of these stations, walk down the stairs, not hassle about parking, get great food, eat here, or take home to their loved ones. That's the goal. In Hawaii, we've seen this time and again. We pull together to help each other, local style, helping out. Today's efforts are exactly about that, helping out. And we're asking the people of the, our community, island-wide, to help out during this period of time. You can't go wrong coming to Cheryl's Highway Inn or any of those places or get work out. Where's the guy who is standing up here? I mean, look at him. He's in good shape, broad shoulders, no old You can be like him if you go. But I mean, it's about coming here. Go here a little bit more often and help out. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank the businesses who came. I like to burst the Highway Inn shirt. You see what's on the back? License the front, but on the back side, what is it? With a la la. <laughs> I went in. So it's just, they're great businesses. They need to thrive. We want to see them thrive after the project is done. Thanks. The attitude we have today is we'll do our best to uh, show the merchants that we feel their pain. We understand that the businesses along the alignment um, are negatively impacted. The second thing we want to do is to put our hearts into trying to alleviate that pain. And um, one of the things, the second message really is, come with message to all of the residents of this island. Come to these places that need our help. And so we are all from an island community. And as participants and citizens in this island community, we all help each other. We all malama each other's pain. And so what we're asking all of the people from this island is to come to these merchants help them along this, this while well, they're going through this rough patch. And um, so we all bond as, as, as this community. Thank you very much. So be sure to visit www.shopanddineontheline.com for the latest offers and discounts. That's going to do it for today. On behalf of all of us on the project team, mahalo for joining us. And we'll see you again next time for another edition of Honolulu on the Move. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on our next Honolulu on the Move show, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter or Facebook, just two of the places where you can stay informed with up-to-date information on the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. And you can view our latest project videos on our YouTube channel. If you'd like more information on the project or would like a presentation to your group or organization, give us a call at our project hotline at 566-2299 or contact us via our website at honolulutransit.org. You'll be able to keep up with the latest news and information about the project, important meeting dates, times, and locations, and examine the official documents that are guiding the project's planning and construction. Take some time to visit honolulutransit.org.